In diesem Gerichtssaal des Nürnberger Justizpalastes, dem Saal 600, wurde ein wichtiges Kapitel deutscher Geschichte geschrieben. Hier stand er damals, Benjamin Ferenc, der letzte noch lebende Chefankläger aus den Nürnberger Prozessen. Wir erreichen den inzwischen 100-jährigen Juristen zu Hause in Florida. Er ist immer noch schwer beschäftigt. I'm busy as hell. Zeugen wie ihn gibt es kaum noch. Benjamin Ferenc jagte die NS-Massenmörder. Er leitete in Nürnberg die Anklage im Einsatzgruppenprozess. Auf der Anklagebank saß das SS-Führungspersonal der mobilen Killerkommandos. I was then 27 years old. I had graduated with honors from the Harvard Law School. I had never been in a courtroom before. It was my first case. And uh, people have asked me, how did you have the nerve to do it? Kriegsverbrecher nach Recht und Gesetz zu verfolgen, war und ist seine tiefste Überzeugung. Das Eröffnungsplädoyer von vor über 70 Jahren hat er verinnerlicht. Vengeance is not our goal. Vengeance is not our goal, I said. We ask this court to affirm by international penal action man's right to live, to live in peace and dignity, regardless of their race or creed. The case we present is a plea of humanity to law. Bereits drei Jahre zuvor, weit entfernt vom Saal 600, begann sein Kampf gegen die Nazis als einfacher amerikanischer Soldat. I was a combat soldier. I had fought in every major battle in World War II. I landed on the beaches of Normandy. I went through the Maginot Line. I went through the Siegfried Line. I crossed the Rhine on a pontoon bridge, on a, a, a riding a jeep, and uh, I was there for the final battle of the Bulge. And I also saw the horrors of war, uh, more specifically. Die vorrückende US-Armee traf immer wieder auf Konzentrationslager und befreite sie. Zugleich liefen die Vorbereitungen für die Kriegsverbrecherprozesse. Der junge Jurist wurde von der Artillerie abberufen und in die Judge Advocate Section der dritten US-Armee versetzt. Als Ermittler für Kriegsverbrechen. Das erste Camp, das wir in war das vierte Camp von uh, Buchenwald. Und uh, was uh, ich da sah, ist fast indescribable. Uh, Dead people lying on the ground, can't tell if they're dead or alive. Their eyes pleading for help. The crematoria is still going. The stench of burning bodies is in the air. Before the crematoria, the bodies, skin and bones, were piled up waiting to be burned. Of inmates, they hadn't had time to burn them all. Uh, and Total chaos in the camp itself. The SS is trying to run out. The Amer army of American soldiers are trying to chase them, catch them. Some of the inmates who are still capable, and there was some, catch an SS man and beat him to death. And I've seen that. And burn him alive. And I've seen that. Uh, and uh, that was the scene. There was nothing like it in real life. Uh, I wrote, I had peered into hell. And that's what it looked like. Bei der Befreiung der Konzentrationslager ging es für ihn vor allem um eines. So viel Beweismaterial sichern wie möglich. So schnell wie möglich. My job was to get the evidence of the crime in a form which would be acceptable to any objective court. The first thing I did was I go to the commander of the tank battalion who had entered and liberated the camp. And I would tell him, I'm here on orders from General Patton carrying out a policy of the United States. I want 10 men immediately to surround the Schreibstuber. Nobody goes in or out without my permission. And we had then the, the listing of how many people were in the camp when they came in, how many they killed, who was the commanding officer, And the evidence was there too, by the bodies floating around. The name of the camp was not important to me. Uh, and uh, what was important to get the evidence before it was destroyed. And the evidence was so overwhelming. 
that it didn't take more than a day or two for me to get what I wanted and move on. If there was another camp being liberated. Es war seine Aufgabe, die abscheulichsten Verbrechen gegen die Menschlichkeit, den Holocaust, zweifelsfrei nachzuweisen. Ferenc ermittelte in den KZs Buchenwald, Mauthausen, Ordruff, Flossenbürg und Dachau. The important thing is inmates dying in front of you, groveling in the mounds of garbage, looking for a piece of bread or something which would save them from starving. And uh, uh, it was so unreal that I had to develop a mentality to tell me this is not real. This must be some horrible Nazi picture, motion picture. This can't be real. And I just blocked it out. I just went and did my job and uh, got out of there as fast as I could. Nachdem in Nürnberg am 20. November 1945 der Hauptkriegsverbrecherprozess begonnen hatte, kehrte er zurück nach New York. Aber nicht für lange. Die US-Ankläger brauchten für die Nachfolgeprozesse dringend seine Expertise. Sie wollten ein repräsentatives Spektrum hochrangiger NS-Täter zur Rechenschaft ziehen. Ferenc flog nach Berlin und stieß auf einen Sensationsfund. Unglaubliche Beweise, feinsäuberlich abgeheftet. I had a staff of about 50 researchers. I set up headquarters in Berlin, which was where the main offices were. And I assigned one to the Reichsicherheit Hauptamt, another one to the industrialists, another one to this. And one of my researchers came in and he said, look what I have. And he came out with a pile of papers, you know. He said, look what I have here, look what I have here. And I looked at it. And it was Heragnus Melvin aus der UDSSR, reports from the front by special squads, Einsatzgruppe A, Einsatzgruppe B, Einsatzgruppe C, Einsatzgruppe D, divided in a total of 3,000 men approximately. And each one was assigned by the SS to deal with different regions. Die Massenexekutionen im Osten waren Teil des deutschen Angriffskriegs auf die Sowjetunion, des Unternehmens Barbarossa. Im Schatten der in Richtung Osten vorrückenden Wehrmacht folgten unmittelbar die mordenden Einsatzgruppen der Sicherheitspolizei und des SD, des Sicherheitsdienstes der SS. Ziel dieser Vernichtungseinsätze war die Zivilbevölkerung, insbesondere Juden, Partisanen, Roma und Sinti. Their assignment, and we had the minutes where they were discussing this, was to go in and kill, without pity or remorse, every single Jewish man, woman and child they could catch. And that's what they did. And then they wrote a report and they said, we entered the town of Minsk or Pinsk or wherever it was, and within the first day we succeeded in killing 13,412 Jews, 250 Gypsies from Tarsa, and they listed them. And I had them all together. These reports were then sent from the front to the headquarters in Berlin. Berlin, they were consolidated and issued a com comprehensive report. And we had a distribution list to 99 of the different offices of the SS and others, the Nazi regime. And I took a little adding machine and I started to add how many they killed. Das größte Massaker fand in der Schlucht Babidjan nahe Kiew statt. Die SS hatte eine Umsiedlung der jüdischen Bevölkerung Kiews angekündigt. Alle kamen, ahnungslos. Dann mussten sie sich ausziehen. Sie wurden nicht umgesiedelt. Sie wurden erschossen. Anschließend wurde die Anzahl der Ermordeten nach Berlin gemeldet. So steht es in der Ereignismeldung UDSSR Nummer 106. Am 29. und 30. September 1941 massakrierte das Sonderkommando 4a der Einsatzgruppe C 33.771 Menschen und berichtete, man sei zufrieden, dass, Zitat, die Aktion reibungslos verlaufen sei. Ben Ferenc las und addierte. Okay, I just ended up when I reached over a million high steps enough. I took a sample. I flew from Berlin to Nuremberg 
Im Gepäck hatte er überwältigende Beweise. Penible Berichte, minutiöse Protokolle der Massenmörder. Auf dieser Grundlage kämpfte er für einen weiteren Prozess. Doch der zuständige General Telford Taylor sagte zuerst Nein. He said we can't. Uh, the Pentagon has already approved the budgets. They're not in favor of any more trials. We can't do it. I got quite annoyed. I said I have in my hands here evidence of mass murder on an unparalleled scale. You cannot let these guys go. He said, well, can you do it in addition to your other work? I said, sure. He said, okay, you do it. Und so kam Benjamin Ferenz in den Saal 600 und wurde mit nur 27 Jahren Chefankläger. Es war sein allererster Prozess. I was very confident because it was a clear case. I said, what? I don't need to call witnesses. I have the man's top secret Geheimracher Sache sent to his higher headquarters. And I said, are you this man? We shall show that these deeds of men in uniform were the methodical execution of long-range plans to destroy ethnic, national, political and religious groups which stood condemned in the Nazi mind. Aber wie wählt man 24 Angeklagte aus, wenn doch alle ca. 3000 Mitglieder der Einsatzgruppen nachweisbar Massenmörder waren? The reason we picked 24 was because in the trial against Göring and company, these were the top Nazis, supposedly, uh, they had only, they only chose 24. They wanted to make an example of it. And there were only 24 seats in the Nuremberg courtroom, room 600. So they were selected on the basis of their rank and their knowledge. And uh, it was a sampling only of uh, what was happening I felt they're the ones who should be given the opportunity to explain why they did what they did and see whether it's a crime or not. And uh, of course, I was sure it was a crime. You can't murder thousands of children and uh, say, well, uh, I, I, was, I never told my men they shouldn't bang their heads against the tree of an infant. They should wait, shoot at the mother. This is actual testimony of Hollandorf. You can aim for the mother. And then you shoot uh, for the baby, and then you shoot both of them with the same bullet, and uh, you save ammunition. The mother is quiet too. This was a demonstration by my lead defendant, Dr. Dr. Otto Oldendorf, SS General Otto Oldendorf, to show that his men were so humane that uh, they didn't want to have the baby screaming all the time, and so they shoot the baby too. Die Mentalität der Täter hat den jungen Juristen sehr beschäftigt. They were irritatingly normal. They're not monsters. They were the ordinary people. How could they do such things? So they, they, they were people who were kind to their cats and dogs, uh, who would normally be accepted as respectable people. I used as my, my model Dr. Otto Wallendorf. He was a handsome man, father of five children, and according to his reports, his unit under his direct command killed 90,000 Jews. I had uh, a particular, let me say, interest in Oldendorf because he was the lead defendant and uh, he was intelligent, well educated, Dr. Oldendorf. After he was sentenced, saying, I went down to see him in the death cell under the courthouse in Nuremberg. I went down. It's the only time I ever spoke to any defendant, eye to eye, man to man. I said, "Hell, and the punish for the Eckerstone." He felt innocent. There was no remorse whatsoever. 
Auf nicht schuldig hatten alle Angeklagten plädiert. Guilty or not guilty? Nicht schuldig. Befehlsnotstand, die Verteidigungsstrategie der Nazis schlechthin. Ferenc konnte sie entlarven. Kurz vor Prozessbeginn hatte ein Angeklagter Suizid verübt. Ein zweiter war verhandlungsunfähig. Alle anderen 22 Angeklagten wurden verurteilt. 14 Mal die Todesstrafe, zweimal lebenslänglich, fünf Freiheitsstrafen zwischen 10 und 20 Jahren und nur eine geringere Haftstrafe. Ein voller Erfolg für die Anklage. Vier Hinrichtungen fanden statt. Doch wenig später, in den 50er Jahren, wurden viele Verurteilte, begnadigt und vorzeitig entlassen. But it's frustrating because it minimized the value of the trials. The trials were really very fair. We only tried a few of them. Every Angels Group member, every single one of them, was certainly an accomplice to mass murder. Uh, obvious to everybody who was there. You can't tell me they can go out and machine gun little children and think that's lawful. Bang orders. Nach Prozessende kämpfte er weiter für die Opfer des Holocaust. Er kümmerte sich um die Rückgabe geraubten jüdischen Vermögens, Entschädigungen für Zwangsarbeiter und das Wiedergutmachungsabkommen mit Israel. Dann lehrte er internationales Strafrecht. Aber sein Lebensthema blieb die Verfolgung von Kriegsverbrechen. Beharrlich kämpfte er für einen internationalen Strafgerichtshof. 2003 war es endlich soweit. Ferenc sprach bei der Amtseinführung des Chefanklägers in Den Haag. May it please your honors, this is a historic moment in the evolution of international criminal law. For the first time, a permanent international criminal court will hear the closing statement for the prosecution. Bei jeder seiner vielen Ehrungen betont er sein Motto, niemals aufgeben. Der unermüdliche Hundertjährige. Bestens gelaunt und fit, dank seiner täglichen Routine. Every morning I do my usual calisthenics, and about 20 minutes, including I finish it up with 101 push-ups. <lacht> That's my test. They say, how are you? I say, I did 101 push-ups. Nobody can tell me I'm sick. 